Hello and welcome. In this lesson, I will teach you the seven rules that you need to know for using articles in English correctly. Articles are the words a, an, and the. There is a final quiz at the end of this lesson for you to test your understanding. Okay, so the first rule is about where to use a and where to use an. So rule number one is use a before a consonant sound and an before a vowel sound. So in all of these words, you see that they start with a consonant sound. Cat starts with k, dog starts with d, boy with b, girl with g, house with h, and tree with t. So we say a cat, a dog, a boy, a girl, a house, a tree, etc. Notice that in natural speech, we don't say a, we say a, like a cat. In this next set of words, you see that they all start with a vowel sound. Apple starts with a, engineer starts with e, ice cream starts with i, old with o, and umbrella with a. So we say an apple, an engineer, an ice cream cone, an old woman, an umbrella, and so on. In speech, we don't say an, we say un. Let's do a small exercise. You see 10 items on the screen. For each one, I want you to say if you would use a or an before it. Stop the video, think about it, then play the video again and check. Okay, here are the answers. Did you get them all right? I want to focus on items number 7 to 10 because these are a little tricky. Number 7 is a university because even though university starts with the letter u, the first sound of the word is not a vowel sound. We don't say university, we say university. So that first sound is a y sound, which is a consonant sound, so we say a university. Number eight is similar. The word European starts with a y sound, so a European tour. In number nine, the spelling has an H at the start, but that H is silent. We don't say hour, we say hour. The first sound is an ow sound, which is a vowel sound, so this is an hour. In the same way, in number 10, we say ma. M starts with an e sound, which is again a vowel sound, so an ma in English. Okay, let's move on to rule number two. Use a and an only with singular countable nouns. We say that a noun is countable if we can count it, one, two, three, four, etc. All of these words on the screen are countable. We can say one elephant, three cars, ten teachers, 500 onions, and so on. Now, if you talk about one person or thing, like one elephant or one car, then that's called a singular noun. And if you say ten teachers or 500 onions, those are called plural nouns. Uncountable nouns cannot be counted in this way. Nouns like water, sugar, milk, love, anger, knowledge are some examples. If you think about it, you cannot say, I drank four waters or I want eight milks. To a person, you can say, I love you, but you can't say, I have five loves for you. That doesn't make any sense. So these are all uncountable. All right, so the rule is you can only use a and an if you're talking about one person or one thing. Let's do another quick exercise. Here are 10 items again. This time you see a or an before the nouns, but some of these are wrong. They should not have a or an before them. Stop the video, identify the mistakes, then play the video again and check. Okay, here are the answers. Number three is wrong because shirts is a plural and you cannot use a or an before a plural noun. Number five is wrong because happiness is uncountable. So again, a or an cannot be used there. The same goes for number six, water is uncountable. Number nine is wrong because doctors is a plural. You can say a doctor, but not a doctors. And finally, in number 10, advice is an uncountable noun. So you cannot ask for an advice. Now, a quick note here, the article the can be used with all kinds of nouns. 
singular or plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Okay, so let's now talk about how to choose between a or an and the. Here's rule number three. Use a or an to talk about a person or thing unknown to your listener and use the to talk about a person or thing known to your listener. For example, my sister has two computers, a PC and a laptop. The PC is quite old, but the laptop is brand new. I say a PC and a laptop because that's the first time I'm mentioning the two computers. That is, until this point, they are unknown to you, the listener. But now I can say, the PC is quite old, but the laptop is brand new. When I say the PC, you know which one I'm talking about, my sister's PC. And the same thing goes for the laptop. So the PC and the laptop are now known to you. In English, a and an are called indefinite articles because they talk about something that the listener doesn't know about. And the is called the definite article because the listener knows what you are referring to. Here's another example, but now, can you fill in the gaps? It's pretty simple. The first time I mention my tree, I'm going to say a tree. So, I planted a tree in my garden last year. Now you know about the tree, so I can say, the tree has now grown big. Now this was easy because we were talking about one tree. But what if I planted two, three, or four trees? Well, you know that we cannot use a or an with plurals. But we can mention the exact number. We can say, I planted four trees in my garden last year. Or if I don't want to say the number, I can say, I planted some trees. And then I can say, the trees have now grown big. The simply means that you know which trees I'm talking about. In both of these examples, we first introduce something with a or an or some, and then we say the because the listener knows about them. But sometimes you don't need a or an because your listener will automatically understand what you are referring to. For example, can you open the window? If we're sitting in a room and if I say this to you, you will know which window I'm talking about. Or if I said, I need to go back home, I think I left the stove on. That means the stove might still be burning, but which stove? Well, you can understand from the situation that I mean the stove in my house. But this isn't always possible. For example, if I say, the man is my boss, you will ask, which man is your boss? It's confusing. But what about if I say, the man in the gray suit is my boss? You know which one I'm talking about. So here we mention a noun with the, the man, and then we give information to identify that noun in the gray suit. Here's one final example. Where's the money I lent you last week? So I start with where's the money, and then I say which money? The money that I lent you last week. Okay, let's now talk about rule number four. Use a or an to talk about non-specific things or people. What does that mean? Well, here's an example. Do you have a pencil? If I ask you this question, then it probably means I need a pencil to write with. Now, I say a pencil because I mean any pencil. I don't care about any one specific pencil. Compare this to the next sentence. Do you have the pencil that Kathy gave you? Here, I'm referring to a specific pencil. Here's another example. I want to buy an apartment. An apartment means I haven't decided which apartment. Maybe I haven't even started looking for one. But I just know that I want to buy some apartment. But look at this next sentence. I want to buy the apartment that we visited. So you know which apartment I'm talking about. And here's one last example. If you're feeling sick, you should go and see a doctor. Maybe you're saying this to give advice to a friend who isn't feeling very well. Here, we don't mean go and see a specific doctor, we mean any doctor. But let's say your friend takes your advice and goes to a doctor. When you see your friend again, you might ask, what did the doctor say? Why are we saying the doctor? 
because we mean that specific doctor who the friend visited. So notice again that we use a or an when we're talking about a person or thing in general and not a specific person or thing. For that, we use the. All right, let's move on to rule number five now. Use a or an to mention the category or type of a person or thing. To understand this, I have a small exercise for you. All of these sentences mention a category or type of a person or thing, but they're missing the articles. I want you to put a or an in the correct place in each of these sentences. Stop the video, think about your answers, then play the video again and check. Okay, in number one, my car is a 2011 Ford Fusion. So here I mention my car, and then I tell you the model of the car, 2011 Ford Fusion. That is basically the type of car that it is. So we use a before it. Number two is, you can use your TV as a laptop monitor. Here, the noun phrase laptop monitor says what type of thing your TV can be used as. And number three, Jim's daughter is an intelligent girl. We say what type of girl she is, an intelligent girl. Number four is, I'd like to become a member of your library. After the verb become, you see that I'm saying what category I want to belong to member of the library. For this reason, a member. We talk about professions in the same way. I'm a teacher, not I'm teacher. A person's profession says what category they belong to or what type of person they are. So you need to have a or an before the profession. Similarly, he worked as a cashier for two years. So to mention a type or category, use a or an. All right, let's now turn to rule number six. This rule is about how to make generalizations. That is, how to talk generally about a whole group or class of people or things. So rule number six is generalize with plurals or uncountable nouns with no article. On the screen, there are six sentences. I'd like you to find all the plural and uncountable nouns. Stop the video, do the exercise, then play the video again and check. Okay, in number one, there are two plurals, teachers and students. Here, we're not talking about any one teacher or one student in particular. We're saying that all teachers should be friendly to all students. In number two, dolphins is a plural noun. We're using it to say, generally, that all dolphins are intelligent. In number three, horror movies it is what I'm generalizing about. I'm saying I hate all horror movies, not a particular one. In sentence number four, coffee is an uncountable noun. And we use no article before it because, again, we want to ask if Pablo likes coffee in general. Number five has two uncountable nouns in exercise and health. We don't use any articles before them because this is a general statement of fact or truth. And finally, number six is the same kind of sentence. It also has two uncountable nouns, education and life. Now, this is the common way of generalizing, but there's one other way of doing it. With countable nouns, you can generalize by using a or an with a singular countable noun to mean every single one that is, every single member of a group. For example, a teacher should be friendly to his or her students. It has roughly the same meaning as when we say teachers, but it's slightly different because it's like saying every teacher should be friendly to his or her uh, students. Here's one more example. The dolphin is a very intelligent animal. Again, same meaning as saying dolphins, but here we mean every dolphin. So remember that this form, generalizing with a, an, or the, can only be used with singular countable nouns and when we mean every single one. So I cannot say, I don't enjoy watching a horror movie or the horror movie. Here, only the, uh, the plural form is possible. It's the same thing with all the other sentences. Okay, let's now talk about rule number seven, and that is where to use no article. 
This is very important and this is one place where mistakes are very common because there are many situations where you should not use an article. In a separate lesson, we will focus on all of these situations, but here's a short list. We use no article in front of proper nouns, that is, names of people or places. We don't say a Steve, the Priya, etc. We just say their names without the. It's the same thing for places. However, some place names have the as part of the name, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and so on. With these, of course, you must use the. We also usually use no article with names of games and languages. Then there are many fixed expressions that have no article. You have to learn these through experience and practice to use them correctly. You see some of these on the screen. It's a good idea for you to memorize as many of these as possible. All right, if you're ready, now it's time for a quiz to see if you can use articles correctly. On the screen, you see some sentences with blanks in them. In each blank, I want you to put a, an, the, or no article. That symbol, the zero with a line through it, is just to say no article. Okay, stop the video, try the exercise, then play the video again and check. Okay, here are the answers. You can stop the video and check them with your answers if you like. In the comments section, let me know how many you got correct. If you're not sure about any of these, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will help you out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking that subscribe button and I will see you in the next lesson soon.